first book of the Bible, in the third chapter, God makes a promise to Adam and Eve for all of humanity. He will send a Savior to forgive sin. When Eve gives birth to her first child, she thinks she's given birth to that promised Savior. He turns out to be a murderer, not a Savior. For thousands of years, each generation clung to that promise from God that he was going to send a Savior. Slowly, more promises are made by God about his Savior. These promises are called messianic predictions or foreshadowings, but they're a promise from God to his people. And then just at the right time, the Father sends the only begotten Son into the world as a child of the Virgin Mary. He is the sacrificed Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And just when it looks like he has lost the battle with death by crucifixion, he rises from the dead. All this is in fulfillment of the scriptures. Or said another way, God kept every single one of his promises. He has been faithful. St. Paul grabs this line of thought in the first chapter of Romans. And he has this wonderful concluding thought in verse 17. Paul says that because God has been faithful, he grants faith. Now, isn't that a wonderful response to doubt? You have nothing to do with salvation, with being declared righteous by God. This is God's doing. And as proof that it's all him and not you, look at the history of God faithfully keeping his promises. If God is thus faithful, he can grant you faith. Even in the midst of doubt, even when it feels like he's taking several thousand years to accomplish his purpose. He is accomplishing it in Christ Jesus. God is faithful. He does what he says. And what he says is you are righteous in his sight through the life, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus. That, there can be no doubt.